One of the problems you have with democracy is it's a way to express your selfishness. I want to vote that I get everybody else's money. And if I get a bunch of people to, to do that, I can take 49% of everybody's money and distribute it to the 51%. And, and so selfishness is you can vote yourself. You're not thinking long term. You're thinking short term. Right. So, so, so if you have 51% of the people and you decide we're not going to work anymore and we're going to charge the 49% of people that have jobs or run the businesses, we're going to say, you know what, you need to pay us now. In a true democracy, there's no boundaries to say that the majority of the people can't vote to make everybody else their economic slaves or their, their economic providers in that sense. And so that would be very destructive in a nation. What happens, a democracy encourages short-term immediate gratification thinking. It's what I want right now. What I want right now might not be good for me two weeks, four weeks, six weeks down the road, or for the nation or for anything else. And so you want something that slows down the emotions, and a democracy tends not to do that. Okay, the last form of government says theocracy. And this is when a, a nation would follow uh, decrees of individuals saying they're following God's commands or religious commands, and they compel people to follow it. And if you don't follow those religious decrees, in that situation, then bad things might happen. And you still see some of this actually in Africa or the Middle East, actually sometimes in Muslim nations, where you have imams or different leaders that say, if you don't follow Sharia law, then bad things will happen. And so you can be punished for not following that religious belief. Well, this is kind of a form of theocracy. And, and even if you go back, even biblical history, you can see forms of theocracy. Now, not all theocracies have been the same. There have been different leaders even representing God, and, and some were much more ruthless than others, even in the way they represented God. But this is another form that has not proved to be ultimately successful in much of world history. Yeah, and there's a difference, too, between theology and religion and theocracy and democracies or republics, because just because you have religion involved with your nation doesn't mean you're a theocracy. It's when you start enforcing and punishing people for not following what the state leader says your religion is, then you've got trouble. But if you're in a nation like America, we're very religious in many of our expressions. Our, our money has God on it. We talk about that. We pray. That's not a theocracy. A theocracy is God has told me that you're going to follow this law, and if you don't follow this law, I'm going to have the sheriff arrest you and throw you in jail. And you're going we don't enforce theology. Theology is what you often find enforced with, with theocracy. Sure. And in America, as you pointed out, even though historically in America we've been a very religious nation, we've, we've had a lot of biblical principles used in government, We've never been in a position where we said, if you don't follow the Bible, we're going to execute you. We're going to throw you off rooftop. We're going to put you in jail, whatever the case might be. But you do even see that in, in some theocracies in the world today. And that's where certainly religion, as you're pointing out, religion's not a bad thing necessarily. It's okay to have religion in government, but compelling people to follow a belief in spite of whatever their convictions might be, that comes much closer to that theocracy idea. Yeah, when you have religious liberty and religious toleration, in other words, you, you have the rights of conscience, I, I may be a Christian, but I'm not going to persecute you because you're not. You may be something else. I'll give you your choice of faith, and the government is going to protect that unless your faith says, I need to kill someone, I need human sacrifice. We'll stop that because government needs to stop expressions of faith that violate someone else's rights. So with religious rights of conscience, you can live out your faith, but the government cannot compel you to do religious actions and activities and beliefs.